We just talked about how a competitive market maximizes efficiency. With perfect competition, you maximize the sum of consumer and producer surplus. We also talked about how trying to intervene in the market led to inefficiency. When the government tries to force the price to be lower than the equilibrium price, the total amount of social surplus falls. You might have consumers better off or producers better off, but when you add up everybody's surplus, society's worse off than before. But there's another aspect we didn't talk about, allocation. When the competitive market works, it serves two functions. First, it ensures that the quantity that is produced is the one that maximizes total surplus. Second, it ensures that the folks who get the results of that production are the ones that value it the most. Think about gasoline. With a market price of $3, anyone who values gasoline more than $3 will get it. Enough gas is produced and the price is in equilibrium, so people who want gas the most will get it. But what about if we're out of market equilibrium? For example, imagine the government forces the price of gas to go down to $2. Now you have two problems. Not only is there not enough gasoline for everyone who wants it, we're also not sure that the people who value it the most will get it. If someone values the gas at $2.01 and she's at the gas station in time, she'll get the gasoline and one penny of consumer surplus is created. But take someone who desperately needs gasoline. Maybe it's someone who's driving to see his child get born. Maybe it's someone running to break up a wedding involving the love of his life. Maybe this guy would pay thousands of dollars for the gasoline. But not there isn't enough gasoline for everyone. If he doesn't get to the station in time, they may be out of gasoline before he can buy it. This is terrible. You could have someone buying gasoline because it gives them a penny of consumer surplus instead of someone else who'd pay thousands. Why is this not a problem in competitive equilibrium? In the competitive case, the price goes all the way up to equilibrium past the artificial $2 ceiling. Therefore, the guy who's only willing to pay $2.01 won't buy the gasoline. There's no longer a shortage, so the guy who's willing to pay thousands has no risk of missing out. How is gasoline allocated if the price ceiling is below the equilibrium price and there's a shortage? As we saw in the 1970s, there were long lines for gas stations. The people who got the gas were the ones willing to wait in line or who had the most free time. And it's not clear that the people who are willing to wait the longest are the ones with the largest consumer surplus. The right person might not have gotten the gasoline. So competitive market is great not only because the right amount of stuff is getting produced, but also because the stuff is going to the people willing to pay the most for it. A competitive market maximizes total welfare and also ensures that the goods sold are allocated to those who value them the most.